How to fight with spear and shield, find out in this video. Welcome, today we will examine Antonio Manciolino's chapters on spear and shield, or to be more specific, partisan and rotella. Today the term partisan is usually referring to a type of pole arm that was used in Europe in the 16th, 17th and 18th century with a roundabout 2 meter shaft and a fairly long spearhead with protrusions on the sides. If we have a look at the depictions of contemporary authors like Achille Marozzo, then Manciolino probably refers to something that is far more similar to our usual understanding of a spear. A thrust-oriented polearm that can be wielded with one or two hands and is very capable of being thrown as well. The rotella is a type of medium-sized round shield that is strapped to the forearm of the wielder. Why I would probably advise against throwing it as your main type of attack, it's an awesome piece of equipment nevertheless and used since the antiquity. Our historical source is the Opera Nova, written by Antonio Manciolino in the first half of the 16th century in Bologna, Italy. While its most extent on fencing with sword and buckler, one of the most important disciplines in the Bolognese school of fencing, it contains very neat chapters on different weapon combinations as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Both you and your opponent start with the left leg in front and with the partisan in an overhand grip, as if you were to throw it. Manciolino starts with a simple parry and repose drill. If your opponent attacks your left leg, Step with your right to your right and let your left leg follow behind it. This body void is our first line of defense. You might already know it as a triangle step. During these steps, parry the attack right to left with the shaft of your spear, the spearhead pointing downwards. Extend your right hand to your left in a way that it's still covered by your shield. From there, turn your hand palm and nails face downwards and thrust a punta reversa, literally a thrust from your left into their chest. An awesome thing about this place is that Manciolino always includes a retreat. So after your thrust, shift your weight onto your left foot and leap backwards with a passing step. So your left foot will be in front again. Move your spear over your head to your right side and you should be in the same position you started with. In the next part, Manciolino demonstrates how to abort a failed attack. We start the play the same way as before, left leg in front and with a thrust to that leg. To get there, you might have to take a passing step with your right. If you now notice, that your opponent starts his defense, as he told you before, immediately jump backwards to get out of their range. These two drills alone are a lot of fun if you practice them somewhat competitively. But of course, you cannot only attack the legs with your spear. To mix it up, thrust to their face. Most opponents will now react by raising their shield, blinding them for a split second. This is where the next part of Manciolino comes in handy. Feint the thrust to the face, but then change the direction of your attack into their body. You could do this with a punta reversa to the chest or another punta dritta, a thrust from your right, to their flank. Retreat with a rearward jump once again to end in our usual position. The last bit of his one-handed section is dedicated to actually throwing the partisan, which is not only super fun, but very effective as well. To defend the throw, Manciolino advocates another triangle step, combined with the already seen shaft parry, spearhead pointing down. This action can be performed on both sides of course, and I would recommend that you judge the side where the spear will land for yourself and not get into a fixed and predictable pattern. 
Also keep in mind that if you train to throw your spear, it's quite useful to train drawing your sword quickly as well. Hell, train pulling your dagger just to be safe, this might be a fight after all. Since the rotella is strapped to our arm, we are able to use our spear just as well with two hands. While this might be not as flashy, I found this usually to be superior within a duel as you have much more control. Grab the butt of your spear with your right hand and the shaft up front with your left. The knuckles of your hand should be facing up. That's actually an interesting choice of wording as the right knuckles could be facing up in an overhand or in an underhand grip. For the following techniques it doesn't matter too much, so just pick what is more comfortable. Just as a proof of concept, my right will be in an overhand grip. I'll probably discuss it in another video. Now, start with your left leg in front once again. If they attack your leg, push your right hand up and your left one to your lower right. This should result in a counterclockwise circular parry with your spear. From this beat, repose immediately with a thrust to the leg. Manciolino doesn't describe the footwork, but I found a step to your left to be very useful. Finish with a step or a leap back to complete the drill with a retreat. Also, wear a cup, please. If they attack your face, perform a clockwise circular parry again to your right. Your spearhead now points up and you are free to strike them to the head, body or leg. Once again I think moving left with your parry is beneficial and you should always train a retreat with all your drills. Alright, I hope you will have as much fun as we had with these drills. I'd be also interested to hear if you have tried spear and shield fighting in your training as well. Maybe you even recorded some footage? Just drop us a comment. We actually got to record some sparring as well, so stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, support us with a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Until next time, enjoy your training.